children. Ungrateful children. Ungrateful children? Think you know about ungrateful children? Let me tell you about ungrateful children. Ever find yourself in the dark when you were a kid? I'm talking about that under the covers in the dark, dark, where the only sound you hear is your own heart pounding? Well, I did. A lot. You see, every week night, I was sent to bed at 7, 7.30 the latest. I'd shut the light, pull up my chenille, pull it over my head, and wait. What was I waiting for? Whatever faint light there was in the hallway or the street would make its way through the blanket thief, and it would seem like I was beneath the twinkling stars of my very own sky. It made me happy, made me feel safe, and it was so quiet. I forget what I was waiting for until what I was waiting for happened. What was I waiting for? I was waiting for them. Or should I say the muffled sounds of them. They're giggling, laughing, cooing with the most beautiful sounds imaginable. Their voices would float across the sky of my undercover world like dandelion buds. By faint echoes of music from the tinny old speaker, from an old radio they had that they just never had the heart to throw away. So I whip away the covers, sneak out of my room, tiptoe to the stairs, peek down. And there they'd be, gliding across the carpet like they were on their very own private ballroom floor. I never knew I was watching. I never wanted them to. These were the times when I knew how much they loved each other. How right they were for each other. Don't get me wrong, sometimes they fought, of course they fought, like cats and dogs they fought, but they never hurt each other. He got her, and she got him. It's that simple, isn't it? We just get each other. And that's that. They were a perfect fit in an imperfect world. And they were all mine. Until early one evening, that is. Father had just come home from work. And Mother had begun making dinner. And the jar of spaghetti sauce she took down from the cupboard, fell through her hands, fell to the linoleum, and exploded into a million pieces. Do you have any idea what a jar of spaghetti sauce looks like splattered over a white kitchen? I mean, how did they get that much sauce into such a small jar anyhow? <laughs> well, it was her last jar, so we had ourselves a problem which normally would resolve itself with father going downstairs to Maddie's bodega to get anything mother needed, but not that night, no. That night he, he was watching a baseball game, a very important one, mother said, so after I agreed to clean up the mess, mother went downstairs to Maddie's herself. No, don't ask me why, but as I began to clean up that mess, I became sick, uncomfortable, frightened even. So by the time the doorbell rang, I already knew something was wrong. And when we opened the door and saw those two policemen standing there, I knew something was very, very wrong. Lights, their ambulances, police cars, news vans. 
sides with those large antennas sticking up through the roof and people, crowds of people, packs of people, quiet people, noisy people, screaming people, crying people, strangers, the familiar, the, the almost familiar friends, my parents' friends and my friends' parents and, and, and shopkeepers and street vendors and we're all looking at me. We're trying not to. But I fought my way through all of them until there was nobody left between me and Manny's except for Toomey the cop. And, and he reached out and scooped me up. I could barely breathe. Not because of him. But because of what I saw peeking through his arms. She was lying on Manny's floor. That filthy linoleum. I can't imagine he ever washed it even once. Her face twisted away from mine. Her chalk white crinkly right elbow lying in a blob of red. No! Not the paid for spaghetti sauce which remained intact on the counter but a spreading blob that seemed to ooze from below and inhale this beautiful body now bent and twisted into some unnatural shape. Boards hopped, flash bulbs popped, sirens wailed, and it, it all sounded muffled as if I was back home beneath my chenille sky. And suddenly, a girl began screaming. Over and over she screamed, and all I could see was her arms outstretched before me, reaching for this twisted woman who sank deeper and deeper, getting smaller and smaller as she was pulled away. She was at the counter paying for her sauce when three men walked in and demanded money. I'm sure Manny smiled. He always smiled. Even as he reached for the gun he kept hidden below the counter and started firing. Everybody started firing! She fell to the floor. That dirty, filthy, never washed linoleum. Bent and twisted. Drowning in her own life. She's slipping away from everyone and everything she'd ever known and loved. Especially him. After she'd gone, Sometimes I'd wake up at two, three in the morning, and the Victrola would be playing. Only now, there wasn't any giggling, laughing, or cooing. Instead, all I hear is him whimpering, crying, talking to himself at first and then to her, followed by the silent wait for her answer. Maybe she did answer and I just couldn't hear her. Truth is, he didn't know how to live without her. So he began trying not to live, that is. He was slowly dying to be with her, 
And here I was, hiding beneath my precious blankie, hiding from him, dreading the, the sight of him, the sound of him, even the smell of him, made me so uncomfortable, sick, frightened. Ugh. Like when I was on my knees in the kitchen cleaning up that disgusting mess and the doorbell rang. So why him and not her? Can anyone answer me that? Why her chalk white crinkly elbow in that bread blob and not his? And why did it ever occur to me that he lost someone too? Why didn't I realize that he loved her as much as I did? Probably more. No, much more. Probably much more. After all, he got her and she got him. Sometimes it is that simple, isn't it? in an imperfect world. All I know is I could have said something, done something, made a, a dinner or two, washed a six full of dishes every once in a while, shown him some kindness, some sign that I understood how much he had lost, how much he hurt. I could have tried to be something for him other than someone else to lose. Instead, he died believing I hated him. And I will always hate myself for that. So don't tell me about ungrateful children. I'm an expert on the subject.